Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a theory developed by Abraham Maslow, which puts forward that people are motivated by five basic categories of needs. This includes physiological, safety, love, esteem, and self-actualization. Today we will be discussing one of these needs, self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Maslow's esteem encompassed confidence, strength, self-belief, personal and social acceptance, and respect from others. In addition to that, it's his theory that self-esteem is a key stage in achieving self-actualization. Today we are joined by Vikish Pickering, a local transformation coach and motivational speaker. Vikish is here to share with us some tips on how we can build our self-esteem and live the lives that we love, we want to, and we deserve. Welcome to Good Morning SK and Vikish. Thank, Thank you. Welcome, Thank Vikish. you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, motivational coach, are you feeling inspired already? I know. <laughs> All right, so in speaking to self-esteem and your experience with it, would you say that a lot of us don't pursue the goals that we have or perhaps don't even frame them mm -hmm. because we don't think that we can achieve them? I agree completely. Um, and uh, when you think about it, Everything, the self, how you see yourself, mm -hmm. what you believe about yourself, which is your self-esteem, um, it shapes how you move concerning anything else mm -hmm. and how you do everything. Because if, if I don't believe that I'm worthy, mm -hmm. why would I pursue with everything in me to mm -hmm. go after a goal that I don't believe I'm worthy of? Mm -hmm. So I completely agree, completely mm -hmm. agree. So how would you recommend that we boost our esteem to follow our goals? Well, you have to get to the root of it. Why do you feel how you feel okay. about yourself? Why do you see yourself the way that you see yourself? And for me, I like to use my personal stories uh, because I feel it's easy to relate to and, you know, persons can understand it. It's practical. Mm -hmm. When I look at me, I would say, sitting here today, I didn't know I was me. And what I mean by that is my circumstances, everybody um, that had a, a, a part in shaping me and caring for me or not, you know, told me that I'm shy, that I'm quiet, that I'm not worthy of accomplishing certain things. You know, I should live life down a certain path. But there was something in me that knew that, no, there was more to it. Like, this can't be it. And I feel like that was me, the mm -hmm. true me, who knew that I'm not my circumstances. Yeah. So that is the place from which I began to pursue from a very young age, mm -hmm. very, very young age. Mm -hmm. So that, I suspect, is one of the ways that you establish connections with the people that you have to coach. So if I were to come to you and you detected, for instance, that I have low self-esteem and it could be traced back to, let's say, one thing that we've identified, what would you say to me next? It's important to find ways to shift the conversation because our biggest enemy is us. So it's important to understand the conversation that we're having inside and once, once, once we're clear on the conversation, then it's time to shift it, whether it is through affirmations. For me, what helped a lot was connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. And over time, I began to realize why, okay, I'm so quiet, why I might not speak up. Mm -hmm. I could link it directly to, to situations, you know, in my childhood mm -hmm. that would force me to be that way. Mm -hmm. So once you're able to connect the dots, then you're able to reverse the conversation because you're able to know, understand that, no, that's not me. That's what mm -hmm. this person caused me to believe. So for me, the first thing is shifting the conversation on the inside mm -hmm. because that's where it begins. You have to begin to believe it mm -hmm. in order to operate from that place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, well, for me, I can honestly say, I remember the first day when I was taking over, I got a little... Um, nerves, and then I was feeling of funny. I'm, I'm like, I want to call sick. I don't think I can do this again. <laughs> and I'm talking to myself, and I'd be like, No, but it's your first day. You can't do it. It's something you always want to do. But my self-esteem was really bugging me because I'm like, I don't think I'm as good as the last person mm -hmm. that was here. So um, you're right. I really had to talk myself. I listened to some Jim Rohn, some mm -hmm. Les Brown, and I'd be like, Okay, 
I can do this. I'm not going to call sick. I'm just going to show up. And it turned out pretty well that day it did. So I definitely understand what you spoke mm -hmm. about. And you said something that's very common. We tend to, and it kind of helps to destroy our self-esteem because we're busy comparing. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to be like the other person. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say as good as the other person mm -hmm. because when you operate in your uniqueness, you're great. Mm -hmm. You're great. Mm -hmm. and, but it's, it's a trap that we all fall into. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of us, I think, fall into it. But wow. it's important to realize that. Mm -hmm. No need to compare. Now, Vikish, we're going to ask you, is there anything that people can do unknowingly that reduces their self-esteem? Definitely. And, and we tend to operate in that place more often than we know in very simple ways, like there's not getting enough sleep. Because when you don't get enough sleep, especially not, not if you have just a night where mm -hmm. you couldn't sleep, but it's becoming a habit mm -hmm. where you don't sleep well, then you don't function in your, your best self as your best self. And because you're not functioning as your best self, then you begin to continue to feed the negative thoughts in your mm -hmm. head about how able or how capable or worthy you are. You know, so that's one thing. Another thing is that we take, we take it very lightly and it's very common today is too much time on social media. Mm -hmm. And we, we, you know, I'm guilty of this, <laughs> right? We are... Uh, I would be like, okay, I just need to go post the content, check for this, check for that, and come then off. come off. And then this is me. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, long time, man. See ya. And then you're gone. And before yeah. you know it, you didn't even touch the thing that you went to do. Mm -hmm. What happens after you've been on for long enough, mm -hmm. looking at all these fabulous lives and mm -hmm. people doing great things, and you start to feel a little less than because mm -hmm. you're comparing your real life behind the scenes to their highlight reel. Yeah. You know, sometimes what you see is not really even what exactly. it is. So that's another very um, damaging thing that mm -hmm. you need to balance. Okay. Balance. It's like fire. Too much of it would consume you. Yep. I like the way you said that. Highlight reel. Yeah. Go see what you said to go tense about you know, mm -hmm. comparing yourself. Yeah. You really don't need to do that. Yeah. I've limited my time on social media, and I still fall victim to the swiping sometimes, but really I limit my time because I'm yes. so aware yes. that what people put out there is what they want others to see, but yeah. not necessarily what mm -hmm. the reality is. Mm -hmm. And speaking to what our personal realities are, do you find that our self-esteem, or rather if we had to put it in ratio, how much of our self-esteem, and I know it sounds weird to say it that way, but how much of our self-esteem do you think is reliant or dependent on other people in terms of our circle, that reinforcement that we mm -hmm. might get from the outside, that encouragement that says you can do this? I think, um, and I understand why you would say it's kind of weird to say it like but that, but it, that's the reality. That's, that's the realness of it. We are, even though it's how we see ourselves, we're still looking for the validation from somebody to help us believe that Oh, yeah, I really am worthy of doing this. So I would say if I had to give it a percentage, I'd say probably like high 80s even. Mm -hmm. High 80s even because the other 20 is us feeding off of what mm -hmm. was said to us. The same mm -hmm. way our beliefs were shaped by others, yeah. which is why another um, important thing when it comes to being mindful of your self-esteem is the company that you keep. Yeah. Because you have friends who would destroy you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes willingly, sometimes uh, knowingly, and sometimes, you know, they're oblivious to mm -hmm. what they're doing. But, you know, we are, many of us are just damaged people mm -hmm. trying mm -hmm. to be better every day. Yeah. And some of us don't even know where to begin to try to be better. So we just continue in this cycle. And uh, I don't know about you, Cortensia, but might be a bit scary to do this mental exercise on live television. What do you say? <laughs> or this is the part where I say I have self-esteem. I can do it. I know. Of course. We can of do course. it. You got this. You got this. Um, I look at it as more of a challenge to do what was mentioned earlier in terms of changing the conversation or changing your story. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell a little story. Mm -hmm. And then the challenge is for you guys to tell me back this story, but in a, a positive way. Because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to put my damper on this story. Okay. So a few, maybe some months, 
he also go I had to go to Barbados with my daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is somebody who is very, you know, prepared. She likes oh, to have nice. things in order and she her dad encourages that. So okay. between the two of them, I'm like, yeah, we set, you know, all the documents ready, they're in a folder, mm -hmm. we're good to go. Um, so we get to Barbados the morning of the appointment and we're there, we're waiting and then finally they call us and we go up and we're missing one of the most important documents. Like we can't go any further unless we have it. So I remembered we were emailing it back and forth. So I'm like, okay, piece of cake. We find an mm -hmm. internet cafe, we print it, good to go. Where the embassy is now is difficult to find transportation to get to where we need to get to. It's mm -hmm. early in the morning. So we're running around trying to find where can we find an internet cafe. We finally hop on a bus. No clue where we're going, but we're going. We're moving. Mm -hmm. We get to town and every internet cafe they could point us to closed. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're discouraged because it's like, am I going to lose the appointment? How does this go? Is, you know, we're in a, a panic. Mm -hmm. So we finally, after phone calls and taxi rides and money spending and everything, mm -hmm. We, we, we finally get it and we go back to the embassy now, but you're already very discouraged. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost as if the whole trip spoiled now mm -hmm. just because of that. Yes, we did get the appointment. Yes, we did um, get what we went for. You know, mm -hmm. she got her green card and everything approved, mm -hmm. but the focus was on everything that went wrong. So mm -hmm. it was the whole trip was spoiled. How could you tell me that story in a way? that is positive like i have my 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 reality because mm -hmm. i dampen the story yeah, okay. <laughs> so i can say right you can start by thinking um when you go for your visa normally you don't get to see barbados mm -hmm. so just look at it this way although you're oh. spending money you're spending it on an adventure because mm -hmm. you would have just oh, gone to the that. embassy I and gone back that. to the airport. So yeah. you're basically seeing parts of Barbados, but because you're so consumed that you're wasting money, everything mm -hmm. locked down, you're mm -hmm. even peeping to see, oh, look, I see this, look, I see that. So now you go come back with a story and say, I actually got a tour of Barbados on my expense because of something <laughs> that I thought um, was bad. Yeah. So you can turn it around in that way that you got to see more of Barbados, mm -hmm. although it costs you a little, but the cost is mem our memories that you can't. Um, recreate at some point. I time, love yeah. that. You aced it. You <laughs> aced it. She did. She did. You going to give it a go, Jamie? Of course I'll give it a go. Okay. I would say that in speaking to the people who pointed you to the Internet Cafe, you got to appreciate the people on the ground for being mm -hmm. friendly and courteous. It, something that you true. might not that's have experienced true. if you were just stuck mm -hmm. in your own world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. And in, in reality, no, I saw it as an opportunity um, for my daughter to see mm -hmm. that when things get tough, you don't give up. It was oh, a lesson for her that, because I know at one point she was like in panic mode mm -hmm. and probably ready to lose it. Mm -hmm. But I, I just kept, you know, being positive and I'm like, we're going to figure it out, we're going to work it out and we're going to go and we're going to try it. Mm -hmm. And in the end, everything worked mm -hmm. out. Yeah. So it was an op a learning opportunity for her. Mm -hmm. But you guys did great. Thank well, you. I have to tell you, Vikish, this is the way that we're going to end the show today on a very positive note. Of so course. all of you out there, take note mm -hmm. that whatever comes your way, even if we're out of time, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to turn it into a positive.